Hey guys, this is vlog number three. Welcome back. In vlog number two, we left off kind of with a cliffhanger, and that was um, it being Easter of 2013, which was at the end of March. That's when um, I started my cycle, and we were able to, the next day, call Dr. Gilchrist's office and tell them that we were ready for our prescription of Clomid so that we could get started trying to make a baby. So um, the first month was kind of a whirlwind, very exciting. We had already knew that this was the way we wanted to go and planned on it. And the next step after starting the Clomid was to tell friends and family. A select few, I think, is kind of who we told. Yeah, we had to be careful on who we told. It was really hard though because being newlyweds, you know, everybody after you get married they want to know when are you having kids and are you guys trying and you know, it's, that was really hard. So with everybody asking, I kind of felt like, okay, well if we're going to do the Clomid and we're going to start with that, then anybody that asks, we'll just go ahead and let them know that we're starting fertility. Maybe they'll back off a little bit on the subject and that's not what happened at all. No, they wanted to know every detail. So, um, some of the things that were really great about it is we had several friends um, that were really supportive and asked questions and didn't pretend to know what I was going through. And then I would say some of my family members were not so gung-ho about the whole fertility thing um, and had some more negative things to say that kind of put a damper on the whole situation. I'm already stressed trying to have a baby, and then you feel like you can't count on your family to be there and be supportive. So did you tell any of your friends No, about not it? really my guy friends much, but I think when we told people at first, and this was a few years ago, right? And this was like- 2013 uh, people, Okay, so bad like memory. Four years ago, <laughs> a few years ago, four years ago, it was still, like new to people, especially down here in Alabama, on like taking fertility medicine. He's so wrong. I have no idea okay. what you're talking about. Okay, then I don't know what I'm talking about. Then people down here like didn't know, didn't know like. <laughs> know about That's why there were doctors, but they didn't know. We're not. I'm talking about people, like friends and family. We're not on recorder now. Brian. <laughs> All I asked was if you told your friends. Yeah, but I wanted to offer my opinion up. People are still new to it. No, they weren't. Fertility's been around for years. Yeah, but when we talked to people about it, people were like, oh my God, you're taking fertility? <laughs> <laughs> this vlog is going horribly wrong. <laughs> Did you tell any of your friends that we were starting fertility? <laughs> That's where I need to start, right? But Did you tell any of your friends that we were going through fertility or what kind of was going on? No, I didn't really tell many people I just kept it to myself <laughs> I why, why do you think you felt like you had to do that I don't know because it was still new to me okay so we started the Clomid it was three days into the cycle that we started and I believe they put a steroid with it but it came with a lot of things um, blood tests ultrasounds so that they could check um, to see if my follicles were maturing and we're going to be able to release eggs. Let's back up to month one of me doing Clomid. What was your experience when I took the hormones? Stephanie was a little bit off, but um, I knew that it was going to be a long process with starting a new medicine like Clomid. But um, I mean, she warned me that she was going to be a little off is the word I'm going to use. Um, so I was kind of like ready for it and I just knew that I had to be a little more patient than, than normal with, with you starting new medicine. I would say that I was an emotional roller coaster. I didn't know what was going to make me happy, what was going to make me sad. I'd be upset about the littlest things and then all of a sudden I'd be laughing. It was crazy. It was like... Off. Off. <laughs> Very <laughs> off. <laughs> Anyways. Um, April was our first month that we started Clomid. Then my body was responding and we just did timed intercourse. Well, obviously that month went by, nothing happened. So we geared up to start 
our second month, which was May. In May, we started Clomid again with the steroid, the blood tests, the ultrasounds, and the ultrasound tech told me, you know, your body's responding and your follicles are maturing, so, you know, they could definitely release eggs this month. And only to go back and be disappointed that once again, I had a negative pregnancy test. So here came June, and in June, my best friend was getting married in California, and so I knew I was gonna have to travel, and I was a mess. I was on hormones and nobody really knew, and it really got in my head. When going to the wedding, this is someone that I've grown up with, and so I knew that I was gonna be seeing people that I grew up with and people from high school, and so here I had gained at least 40 pounds and I wasn't feeling so great about myself and on top of that I'm taking Clomid trying to have time to intercourse and have a baby and traveling was fine that didn't seem to be a problem but it was when I got to the wedding and around people I started feeling really self-conscious and Brian I told him this the other day and he said he had no clue that this ever even happened. But um, super embarrassing, my best friend's getting married. I had some sort of reaction to the makeup that they put on me, so my eyes were already watering and kind of swollen. And so now here I'm the biggest girl in the group uh, out of the wedding party, so I'm insecure about that. My makeup has totally been running all day, so I look like I have no makeup on. And I stood up there while they were getting married and I literally bawled my eyes out the whole time. Like it was a funeral, I swear it was the craziest thing and I couldn't control it. So I was like, well maybe nobody really noticed. Um, no. Afterwards, I probably had five people come up to me asking me if I was okay and why was I crying so much and oh, or making just little comments like, man, you were really emotional and you can't really explain to someone, hey, I'm on fertility and secondly, it's my best friend's big day and I didn't want to take away from her that I'm going through something and, you know, I just wanted to be there for her. So towards the end of the night, I was getting a little uncomfortable and so I ended up just getting the tram back to the hotel and I was definitely ready to get home not because I didn't enjoy the wedding the wedding was gorgeous she was the most beautiful bride ever but I needed my emotions to stay inside my home <laughs> and not be out there because it was just really really off <laughs> hey y'all so I'm back from yesterday I had every intentions in finishing the vlog and I went to the gym today and I have a bit of a knee injury so as you can see I'm in my comfy clothes and I figured I would finish vlog three for y'all so I came home from my friend's wedding and that was in June and we went back to the doctor's office to have an ultrasound to check my follicles and my follicles were great and so we were really hopeful and we were let down again. So um, that meant that we had a negative pregnancy test and that we would try again in July. So here came July and I knew that this was gonna be our month, it was my birthday month, and it was for sure gonna happen for us. Had blood work done, took Clomid, had my follicles checked, and they said my follicles were not responding. So at that time I had gone to the appointment by myself and I had totally lost all control of my emotions because I pumped myself up to really think that July was the month so then when it didn't happen I was super bummed out. So um, I remember having to have like a little meeting with the doctor, the OBGYN, and discuss what our next plan was because it had been four months and I told him I was just done, I needed a break, I was frustrated with myself because I had gained a bunch of weight, and for me, I just needed a break from all the hormones and my emotions being up and down, and I'm sure my husband felt the same way. So after I left my appointment, I drove to Brian's work, which is about 30 minutes away, and I informed him that I had made the decision that we were not gonna go on with 
fertility anymore, that we needed a break um, for our relationship and just for my sanity, I needed a break from it. The doctor had um, offered up an appointment with a fertility specialist in Mobile and I told him absolutely not. I wasn't even thinking about that. I wasn't even thinking about the next step, which could be IVF or you know anything else. So I just wasn't there and I just needed a break. After July rolled around, here came August and I got a very interesting phone call and that was from the fertility specialist in Mobile, which I had said I didn't want to go forth with randomly called me and they wanted to set up an appointment and they wanted to send me paperwork and just to talk about what the next step could potentially be whether we were ready for it right then or ready for it in three months and i think at that point when i talked to brian we both kind of felt like we're not sure how this happened we don't know if the OBGYN set up set it up or there was a miscommunication and they thought we wanted to go through with it but this is obviously a sign from somewhere that we need to just go forth. And so when I talked to Brian about it, he said, yeah, we should just go and talk. It's not going to hurt, you know, just for us to talk. And so I got pumped up again to do whatever we were going to do. Talking, fertility, at that point we had no clue. So we set our appointment up for the end of August. And on vlog four, I'll tell you all about how our appointment went with the fertility specialist. 